Today, we're going to talk about how to reach your high fi end game. <laughs> Who am I kidding? I'm about to tell you all exactly how to get there and what the most important part of your hi fi rig, especially when you're getting started. What's up? You reach your high fire end game yet? Tubes. That's how I reached my end game. Nah, it's not that simple. Let's put them on display so they fall on the concrete floor. So was it really the new amp that was that good? Or was it the new amp that was now showing me the potential of the DAC that I had? Man, this was confusing. Okay, why did I have tubes in my hand? I don't know. In part one of the series, I talked about what elements of your hi fi rig have the biggest sonic impacts to what we hear. So today I'm gonna keep diving into how I reached my hi-fi end game. Now, this is just going to be me giving you some theories and a little bit of my experiences on a few topics to help you have a starting point, some guidelines. To help myself understand as I progress through my journey in hi-fi, I came to the following understanding. Now, this is for me. This is my understanding. I get it. I get it. What I'm about to tell you is an oversimplification. It is. And I'm already looking forward to the quality comments after what I'm about to say. But I want to hear what you all have to say because Sharing all of our perceptions and our experiences, man, that's how we learn. That's how we grow. It's a very complicated hobby. So let me oversimplify it. And this oversimplification has helped me at times remind myself that what I thought was truth was a 50-50 chance. Like it helped me stay grounded just to remind myself. So first, the potential. The source, so the DAC, the digital analog converter or turntable that includes the phono stage, the tone arm, the cartridge. So yes, the DAC can significantly impact the quality of the sound overall and the fidelity of the music we hear. But potential on its own doesn't mean much. Then when we look at the pre-amplification and end amplification layer, to me, I look at it like the performance of the system. So the amplifier and the preamplifier, through their performance, will reveal the potential that comes out of the source. And the third part is the speakers. I try to think of the speakers as the output filter. It's contextual. Because the speakers, they receive the amplified signal that allows them to convert an electrical current into audible sound waves, is what allows our ears to actually hear the relationship between the performance and the potential. Again, like this is just, this is an oversimplification. It's far more complicated than that, but it's a great three point of reference that has really helped me actually understand what was happening when I would change certain components in my hi-fi system. You know what? Let's dive into it. Let me show it to you. Okay. So this is my little visual to help uh, tell my little story. First check, let's just look at the DAX for a second. So the DAX, DAC, 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 see this, the red ones? The red ones represent the DAX, okay? And I tried to just give an idea here of the range. So you got equivalent to the sound of the radio, it's equivalent to the sound of a good sound bar. Oh, we got a center image and we got good dynamics. Oh, hello, sound stage, and we have some good solid bass energy coming in. Whoa, now we got a three-dimensional sound, and I can actually really feel the instruments, the strings, the textures. And then we have singers and instruments are just simply in the room. Wow. So then... We have the performance factor, which is the pre-amplifiers and the amplifiers. So originally I started with a very cheap receiver, then uh, went to a Rega Brio, then went to a Prima Luna, had the Prima Luna for a while, and then the Prima Luna, so the Rega Brio 
the regular Brio brings you that center image and it's got okay dynamics. But when you bring in a Prima Luna, uh, the Prima Luna will give you that sound stage, will give you that gorgeous bass energy. It is a great solid amp. So I had the Prima Luna for a while. As you can see, Prima Luna, Prima Luna. Uh, then it went to a Moon P5 preamplifier with a separate independent power supply, dual mono, the works. This is a phenomenal preamplifier. And then I also used a special 845 amplifier. Used it again. And then at the end, I did another test using my old receiver. Now, let's look at the speakers in the story. Cheap bookshelves, nameless. Sonos Faber Concertos, Sonos Faber, Sonos Faber. Went to Verity Audio Speakers, Verity, and then there's Verity Audio Speakers for the rest. And then for each of these setups, the black bar is the overall sonic performance. So the higher the bar, the better. Uh, so in the beginning, it was basically the equivalent of radio sound, and as you can see, it progressed. So just to help you guys understand. All right, let's re-enable all of these things. And let's go for the story. All right, so when I first started, I had this little cheap DM DAC and I was using a cheap uh, stereo receiver and some no-name crappy bookshelves that I don't even remember the name of. And this really didn't give me much of a performance. So it gave me a performance that was equal to sound of a radio. Sound just came out of each speakers. There's no such thing as a sound stage or stereo image, nothing. Terrible bass. All I could think about was I need to get a bunch of subwoofers because I just I got nothing. So naturally, like most audio files at the beginning, I decided ah, I'm going to need better speakers and I'm going to need a better amplifier. So I went and got the Sonos Fibers and I went and got a Rega Brio, a little tiny amplifier. This was not a good match. It didn't work together. I still had the same cheap old DAC, but the, the Brio and the Sonos Fibers, it just didn't work because the... Sure. I almost kind of had a center image, but I'm not even showing it as a center image here. It's like equivalent to a really good sound bar, basically. Eh, a really good sound bar that costs much more than a sound bar because Sonos Fiber Concertos at the time were several thousands of dollars. Um, and the regular beer Brio was, I don't know, $700, $800-ish so around there. So I was like, okay, ah, what's the problem? What's the problem? Ah, you know, I was really in love with my speakers. There were Sonos Fibers. I was in love with them. They're beautiful. And I had heard them in shows sounding much better than they did in my home. So I was like, all right, maybe the reg is not the good amp for this. Let's get a Prima Luna. So got a Prima Luna, still with the same DAC. Now the sonic performance jumped, jumped. Oh yeah. I had a soundstage and I had bass, man. Those little Sonos Farbers, like I could play Metallica on them and I could feel that drum. It was really good. And this is where my brain just triggered when prima luna showed up with this my brain got triggered this was great stuff but then i decided hmm all right so everything in my system now my amplifier and my speakers are you know in the ballpark of a few thousand dollars each i was like maybe it's time to change my little 200 dollars DAC into something that's a little bit better so i got an mpd1 now the mpd1 DAC definitely a hell of a lot better than the dn DAC. And I felt it in the sonic performance. Just by changing that DAC, my soundstage got a bit better and I had an even better bass response, I had a better detail in the mids. Everything was better, had a little bit more air. It was better. It was noticeably better. I was like, wow, the DACs do make a good difference. Then I got stupid. Then I got stupid because then I got a pair of Verity audio speakers. And these are expensive speakers. And I went from like a $3,000 pair of speakers to a $15,000 pair of speakers. And as you can see here, it's represented the, the, the reach of these speakers, aka the output filter, is capable. And I had heard this at dealers and at shows of the singers and instruments were in the room. This speaker was capable of doing that. And I knew this. But I still have my Premier Luna and I had the same MPD-1 DAC. So by adding a $15,000 speaker, did my sonic performance match the capabilities of the speaker? No, it got better. But I can't say that I felt like I had a three-dimensional sound and that I could feel like I was touching the instruments in front of me. No, 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 not yet. So I figured, all right, so maybe I need a much better DAC because, you know, Prima Luna is a solid amplifier, and it is. So then I changed the, the, the DAC to a P2 DAC. Now, this P2 DAC was more than double the price of the MPD-1 DAC. And it actually helped. It brought my overall performance 
to where I felt like my soundstage was three-dimensional and I could feel the instruments. And it did, as represented here by this black bar. So then I thought, wow, okay. Let's see where the DAC can bring me. Then I got a V2 DAC, which is now double the price of the P2 and four times the price of the MPD-1. I'm talking about about a $5,000 DAC-ish, ish, maybe a bit less. Um, and I was like, it's going to be amazing. I'm going to get to that point where I'm going to feel like the instruments are in the room. Nope. It went up. It got better. Three-dimensional sound just got a little bit nicer, a little bit more defined. Um, the textures in the mids were a little bit better, a little bit better in the air. The bass had a bit more detail, but it wasn't a massive jump. It made me go, oh, diminishing returns. That's what diminishing returns are like. Time went on, and then I decided, all right, time to change the Prima Luna. I was able to get my hands on a Moon P5. Now, the Moon P5 is an old but amazing preamplifier. Separate power supply, dual mono, just incredible. And I paired it with an amazing 845 tube amplifier. Wow. Now the potential for this amplifier, sorry, the range of this amplifier in terms of its performance, including the preamp, I had heard them before and that's why I bought them. They were showing the instruments in the room. And now all of a sudden with that amplifier, with my Verities and with the V2 DAC, the sonic performance overall, I had the singers in the room. Wow, spectacular. The detail was so, so intense in resolution, but non-fatiguing. The, the soundstage was so three-dimensional, sparkly everywhere, amazing detail in the bass. You couldn't tell that the bass was coming from the speakers. It was all part of the instruments that were in the room. And I was like, wow, this is the best amplifier ever and this preamp oh my god i'm gonna stick to separates forever this is the way to go i was 100 convinced that now this was all this combo of amplifier and preamplifier so the performance was sky high and i was like this is what matters the most then i thought about it i was like i wonder what it's going to sound like if i bring the mpd1 back because at this point i had gotten rid of the p2 so I brought the MPD-1 back. What did the MPD-1 do with this amazing amplifier, preamplifier combo and my crazy speakers? Huh. I did not have the singers and instruments in the room anymore. So then the question came. What I heard in this story here with this preamp and amplifier, it wasn't just the preamplifier and the amplifier. It was the fact that this combination of performance was taking far better advantage of the potential that this V2 DAC was giving, thus maximizing what these output filter was capable of doing, which gave me that amazing sonic response. But then I thought, hmm, what if I take this amazing DAC this amazing speakers, and I just use my really shitty old receiver that I used to have over here. I'm telling you, and I had friends over because they were debating, oh, the speakers is the most important. You should spend the most money on the speakers. Don't worry about the amplifier. Get a really good DAC and just get a $1,000 amplifier with your speakers and you'll get an amazing result. Eh. Nope. With this shitty receiver, I kid you not, even with this DAC and with this speaker, by not having the performance in the amplifier, my sonic result was garbage. And that is with $15,000 speakers, a close to $5,000 DAC, but with a shitty sub $1,000 receiver, I'm sorry, the performance was terrible. No more soundstage, not even a stereo image. There wasn't. The sound now was just coming from each speaker. That's it. It was terrible. Honestly, a really good sound bar with a subwoofer sounded better. So the point here is understanding how your DAC can bring you potential and how your amplifier and preamplifier will determine the overall performance that is captured within this potential. And then your speakers ultimately is decides how much of that combination is going to be heard. Anyways, so that's the little story. Back to the regular video.
What would be the most important thing for me? How would I start? I would start by identifying a pair of speakers that speaks to me. You want your speakers to speak to you. You don't want them to shout at you. You don't want them to whisper at you. That's why they're called speakers. I don't mean a speaker brand or model that you read about or heard a reviewer say, this speaker is amazing. No. No matter what people say in an article or in a video, you do not know, unless you know this person very well and you've spent a lot of time with them and in their listening room, you do not know if your taste lines up or matches or even comes close to their taste. So saying that something sounds warm, dynamic, transparent, relative to what? Your perspective and your point of reference is going to be drastically different than their point of reference. It's normal. So start with a speaker that you either heard at a dealer, friends, join an audiophile club. There's a bunch of them. Social media, it's not that hard to find. Or at audio shows. Expona, the Florida audio show, Toronto audio show. There's all kinds of audio shows. A pair of speakers that fits your budget and that makes those little goosebumps on your arm stand up when you hear them. That's a starting point. And that starting point, your first deep dive is going to be what amplifier works well with those speakers. That, in my experience, is the absolute most important starting point of any hi-fi rig. It's not the speakers, it's not the amplifier. It is the synergy between the amplifier that will make the speakers you chose sing. That's That's my experience that says this. Once you have a pair of speakers that is matched to a good amplifier, that works well with these speakers. How are you going to know if it works well? This is where it takes a bit of research. And it's going to take some time. There's no shortcuts with this. You might be lucky and you might land on something that works right off the bat. Sounds great. Good. Actually, that's far more probable these days, I have to say, if you are looking at entry-level budget equipment. Because these days, the entry-level budget equipment has gotten really good. But if you're entering this hobby with deep pockets and you just choose to buy what looks shiny and what looks good and spend the price of a car on your hi-fi rig, unless you landed on a really good salesman, a, and I mean a really good one, with experience that knows what they're doing, you'll probably get a decent system. And again, I'm not talking to those that just want it handed to them. I'm addressing you. No, no, no. You. The person that wants to understand, that wants to have fun in this hobby. Sure, you're a music fanatic, but there's something more to it. You've experienced it. You've heard it. You know exactly what I'm talking about. That's who I'm talking to. So find a speaker that speaks to you. Then do your research and your homework and your tests to find the amplifier that is also in your budget that makes the speakers you picked sing. They sound detailed enough to your liking that there's a mid-range that is convincing across the instruments, across the voices, and has a bass response that at minimum is giving you a sense of realism. Those are the three things. The rest, the spacious three-dimensional stereo imaging, you'll get to that in time. I'm aware now of what I find impressive and what I find comfortable in the sound. I need a very good balance of both. And as a matter of fact, with every year that goes by and with every extra little gray hair that shows up in my beard, I used to lean far more on what was impressive. But today, with every year that goes by, that ratio is greatly shifting to what I find comfortable. 
When I used to go to shows, there were rooms that would really impress me. The sparkle in the top end or the bass energy going right through my chest and my gut. Or this insane soundstage that was extremely three-dimensional and holographic. They were very impressive. But when I got home and I got tired, I realized that I really need to listen to myself as much, if not more, to what I want or what my brain is thinking about when I'm tired as opposed to when I'm wired and awake, hyped up on like nine freaking espressos. When I was younger, it was all about when I'm wired. That's what I'm focusing on. That's what I want. But now, I pay much more attention, or more than I used to, to what I think about, what my thoughts are, when I'm tired, or when I'm reflecting. The equivalent, I guess, of a, medi- of, of, of a meditative state, when, when you meditate. So I come back from a show, all the things that impressed me during the day, when I was tired at home, those were not the rooms or the systems that I would think about. And I never thought anything of it when I was younger in the early days, but now... I honestly don't have an actual valid opinion after a full day at, a, at an audio show until the evening when I get home or I get to my hotel room, depending on where I am, and I'm kicking back and having a little drink after supper, and I let the thoughts happen. If I have to put brands and names to hi-fi systems in this example, I would get unbelievably impressed by a system that was built of Bowers and Wilkins 800 series with ultra high end Macintosh amplifiers or cord amplifiers. Super impressive. Wilson audio, super impressive. And I mean, super impressive. But when I was tired at night, kicking my feet up with a little glass of bourbon, a little glass of scotch or a glass of wine or tea, found myself thinking about Harbeth speakers or Proax speakers. Huh? They didn't impress me during the day. But my brain went back to them. They went back to that mid-range. They went back to that comfort. And it's not to say that today I have Harbess. Nope, never owned them. I'd love to own Harbess one day, have just to have them around because I do enjoy their sound. But what that did is it made me learn about what it is that I enjoy in, in a sonic performance for me to be able to listen to very long periods of time. So think about that. It works for me. And today, I've never been happier with my hi-fi rig. As a matter of fact, this is so much fun. And because it's fun, I get to think outside the box. I get to actually try new things. So that's part two. There's going to be a part three. Thanks for watching. Love you all. If you like these videos, click subscribe, click like, ring the bell. You know, that whole YouTube shebang. All right. And now to go see if... This was in focus, and if the sound was good, or if I have to start this over again. The most important aspect of your sound system. Check that fucking sound.